So this is section 3.3, and we are just going to talk about slope. And slope is just uh, a way to measure the steepness of a line. So if we had some graph, and then we had some straight line that went through that graph, let's say that it was something like this. I think that what I'll do too is I'll just draw the line so we can see the line. As it goes through those two points and it just keeps on going. So um, I want to find the slope of this line. It's a measure of how steep it is. So slope, we can think of it as a couple of things. One of them is um, rise over run. So it's a measure, a ratio of how far it goes over and how far it goes up. And the rise is the up and down part. So notice this goes over one, that's the run. And then from here, it goes up three. And what I'm counting is these sections right here. I'm not counting the points, so it's one, two, three jumps. See how it goes over one, up three. The slope of this would be three over one, which is just three, that's the slope. Um, slope is also known as um, change in y over change in x. And we know that this is x, this is y. So it's the change in this direction, the over, uh, and that's under the uh, up, the change in y, this direction. Let me do another, um, another line. Oops. And I'll do this point right here and this point right here. And again, if I go like this with it, so I had those points are kind of well defined for me on there. And so I can think about how far does this go over? One, two, three, four. It looks like it goes over four and then up one and gets back on the line. So it's change in line, change in X, rise over run. So the slope of this would be one over four or one fourth. And notice this is a ratio. Um, like it keeps going one, two, three, four, over four, up one, over four, up one, it hits the line again. And it would have been exact if I had been better with my ruler. Um, but I could measure it in a big way. It also, it also goes over eight, up two. And so notice rise over run, two over eight, that's one fourth again. So I can get slope a lot of ways on a graph just by counting like if this was my line let's say uh, right here it goes over two one two three four up four so my slope would be four over two four divided by two is two my slope would be two two is the same as two over one so notice the ratio it goes over one up two over one up two and it just keeps doing that this is for straight lines, right? For like linear shapes. So let me change the screen up a little bit. And if I'm, um, I'm gonna draw another line that's like this, goes like that, and, th and it goes through some points, something like uh, three, five, and two, one. So there's those points. And this isn't necessarily drawn to any scale, but that's what it goes. Um, that's how, that's two points that it goes through. Now notice this, it goes over and up. And I don't have the grid on this where I can where I can just count out the grid. But what I can do is that I can keep thinking of the slope set so its rise over run, which is the same as the change in y over the change in x. That triangle means change in, it's a delta. So if I think about the change in x, that's this direction, the run, and the change in y is the up and down. So when I say change in x, I actually mean the change in the x values. Like if this was on a graph, notice like x would be two here and here x would be three. So my change in x is, how far is it from two to three? It's one. So my change in x is one. And my change in y, that's these heights. This would be at a height of one and this would be out here at a height of five. So how far is it from one to five? Four. So the slope of this would be four over one or four. Now I could have slopes that go 
up or down, um, you know, they don't have to always be positive. So for example, if I had one that went through some points, let's say that this is the point uh, 7, 10, and this is the point 9, 5. So if I think about the slope on this one, I still have this run, right? This change in x, 7 to 9. So how far is it from 7 to 9? 2. Notice how I'm getting there. I'm going, um, I'm just seeing it, right? 7 to 9. But another way to think about it is I'm going 9 minus 7. And that's my change in x. Now my change in y from 10 to 5, it's a distance of 5, but it's going down, right? So it's a negative 5. So just like I went 9 minus 7, I could go... 5 minus 10 as well to get my change in y. So my change in y is negative 5. That goes on top. My change in x is 2. That goes on bottom. So the slope of this line would be negative 5 halves. So just to write a couple, summarize a couple things that we know so far. Whoops, I want to do this in a different color. Slope, we can think about it as change in y over change in x, which is rise over run. And it's also basically if I have two points, um, let's say I, like I have a point x, y, and I have another point. Now, this is going to be tricky, the notation. Um, I'm not going to write them both as x, y, because what if these x's are different? So I'll call this one the first x, and I'll call this one the second x x sub 1, x sub 2. And I'll call this one the first y, and I'll call this one the second y. So for example, if I uh, had something a little more concrete for it, I have a line that goes through a couple of points. Let's say this is the point uh, 4, 9, and this is the point 7, uh, 15. x1, x, y2, like these would be the one point. So for example, that could be my x1 and that could be my y1. And then maybe this would be my second point. This would be my x2 and my y2. I'm getting at that because I'm going to get a formula here. Um, change in y, change in x. So if I think about my change in y from 9 up to 15, I could just think of it as 15 minus 9. Right? See how that's like my, my second y minus my first y. And if I think about this one, 4 out to 7, my change in x, uh, I could think of, get that just by going 7 minus 4. So that's my, my second x minus my first x. And so that actually helps me think about this. Uh, y2 minus y1, 15 minus 9 is 6. 7 minus 4 is 3. So it looks like the slope of that would be 2, assuming I did my arithmetic right. Um, but... Notice where the 6 came from, y2 minus y1. So my change in y is I subtract the y parts from the two points, y2 minus y1. And then my change in x is subtracting those x points, x2 minus x1. So I can also get slope just from points. So let me think about that for a sec. Um, how about if I just had some points? I'll just make some up. Uh, 5, 7 and uh, 9, 1. Those are two points that um, I know that a straight line goes through and I want to find the slope. All right, well, the way I can find the slope is what's the difference in y? 1 minus 7. What's the difference in x? 9 minus 5. Notice my subtracting is going the same way. Like if this is my first y, this x that's from the same point is my first x as well. Right? Like I can kind of see the point here and see the other point here. Uh, 1 minus 7 is negative 6. 9 minus 5 is 4. The slope of that would be negative 3 halves. So we have this idea of slope. We know we can find it if we see a graph, you know, just counting, um, just counting on the grid. We know we can do it if we have points, subtracting the y part, subtracting the x's parts. We could also find slope in a table. So let me make a table here real quick and we'll find the slope for it. x, y, 
and this will be five, six, seven, eight. And my Y values will be uh, 11, 16, 21, 26. So notice each of these is, is a point, 5, 11, 6, 16, 7, 21. Notice also, if I think about the way that this, uh, these points are changing, my change in X here is one. And actually it looks like my change in X is always one in the way that this table has been written. So how about my change in Y, 16, 11, that's adding, that's changing by five. So notice right here is the change in Y and right here is the change in X, right? How Y is changing, how X is changing. Well, there's my slope. 5 over 1 is 5. Let's do one more table. So x and y. There's some x values. And uh, for those y values, Ninety-five and uh, 102. So if I want to find a slope from this table, I can think about my change in X and yeah, my change in Y. Sorry, how's Y changing each time? This looks like that's plus seven. That's plus seven. Oh, it's plus seven each time. And then my Y, my X, my, these, are, these are plus two each time. So if this is my change in Y and this is my change in X, my slope would be seven halves. Great, so now you should have ways to find the slope if you have a graph. Um, first example, if you just have some points. Second example, and if you have a table, it's third example. So those are the types of questions that I'm gonna ask you on the assignment for slope. All right, good luck.